Hi, I'm Ksenia and thank you so much for joining me for this series looking at Jupiter's transits through each house of the horoscope. It is lovely to have you with me. I especially want to welcome all the people who are viewing this who are new to astrology. I hope this video helps you learn more and understand more about how astrology operates and the effects of astrology in your life. And also welcome back to those of us who are a little bit more seasoned in our knowledge of astrology. It's a pleasure to have you here as well. Hopefully if you are more seasoned in astrology you'll be able to help out those who leave comments in the comments section looking for answers and, quest and asking questions. So thank you for helping and supporting me in that endeavor and to help make this a beautiful community where we can communicate and uplift one another on our journey to know more about astrology. So we're going to be looking at Jupiter transiting through the houses. But first let's look at a little bit about Jupiter itself as a planet. There's so much to know about Jupiter. What a fantastic planet and it's such a joy and a thrill and a delight to be talking about Jupiter, stepping into Jupiter energy because he is known as in astrology the great benefic, bringing benefit, bringing expansion, bringing growth, bringing abundance into our lives wherever he sits in the chart, in the natal chart. But as I said, in this instance, we're looking at transits and, ha and the benevolence that he brings where that's going to be felt and experienced more um, according to transits. But let's start by looking at Jupiter. Well, Jupiter is a magnetizer. If you think about Jupiter out there in the actual outer space, Jupiter energy draws things in. It's got this massive magnetis field for a start, and it also it attracts objects around it into its gravitational pull. So it's, it's this massive planet, and it is quite literally a magnetizer, draws things to it out there in space. And the same energy is represented by Jupiter uh, in astrology as well. So when it transits a house or a sign, and we're using whole sign astrology with this, where each sign represents a house, it will draw things to it of the nature of that sign or that house. It will magnetize those things, pull those things in and make them uh, manifest more in the life of the individual and the life of the collective as well, I might add too. As I said, Jupiter is the biggest planet in the solar system and it is therefore very effectual. Jupiter uh, very nearly became a second sun in the formation of our solar system millions of years ago and would have entered into therefore a binary system with our, uh, our actual sun or maybe one of them might have gobbled the other up, who knows, but they, uh, Jupiter didn't quite get there, it didn't quite have the oomph that it took. But nonetheless, Jupiter is massive and he functions very much um, in the nature of a, a benevolent sun in our chart, bringing confidence um, and bringing uh, illumination to things. And because of his mass his energy, his energetic output, as I said, he has this monstrous magnetosphere um, that reaches out into um, the zone of Saturn, actually. They, it crosses into Saturn's orbit. Um, and because of this influence of Jupiter that is so expansive, quite literally in the skies and figuratively in astrology as well, the effects of, Ju of Jupiter are far-reaching and very, very influential. Jupiter is expansive in astrology as goes with the, the idea and the nature of um, as above, so below, and him being the biggest planet, the most expansive planet, his energy in our lives is very expansive as well. In fact, he is so big that you could fit 1,300 earth size balls <laughs> inside of Jupiter. 1,300. It's a phenomenal thought, difficult to get our head around, really. Not only that, you could actually fit every single other planet in the solar system into Jupiter all at once. Go figure, he's enormous. So he brings expansion with his transits and with his natal placement as well. He brings abundance as well. He brings enthusiasm. He brings opportunities. He brings, as I said before, confidence. He brings also a sense of morality to an area of our life wherever he's transiting. He brings a, a need for ethics to wherever he's transiting. And he brings a sense of adventure and ooh, what could I experience now? What can this do for me? How can I utilize this? What, it, what can I learn about this? He brings that energy to the area of the chart that he's transiting as well. 
Jupiter rules being charitable, generosity, giving, and he will bring this character of benevolence into whatever area of your chart that he happens to be transiting. You will feel more benevolent, more charitable in, you know, and feel like giving to that area of your life in, a, in greater capacity. Jupiter is also very forward looking. And so his transit to a certain area of our house will give us more of a, a forward-looking approach to the themes of that house. He allows us, he's, he's actually a planet that connects to prophecy, and he allows us to gain a glimpse of the potential of the future possibilities of a house. He gives us the chance to extend and expand beyond our current limits in a certain area or realm of life that, that is connected to the house in which he's transiting. One of my favorite mantras that I use frequently is um, I expand to meet my destiny. I, this is my mantra when I practice yoga and do all sorts of other things in life and I remind myself I can expand and become big enough to um, embrace the destiny that the universe has for me, the highest vibrational good that is represented in my chart. So if you're feeling limited or blocked in a certain area, certain realm of life, just wait till Jupiter gets to that, um, that section of your chart and watch the blossoming occur. Watch, watch yourself expand beyond the, the limits you perceived that were around you. The blockages, the restrictions in a certain area can be absolutely sort of pushed out. The boundaries are expanded for you to experience more blessing, more abundance, more prosperity in a certain area. How this works is that well, Jupiter has a connection to our visioning processes, our you know our dreaming. Like Jupiter in ancient astrology rules the sign of Pisces, and Pisces is all about our dreams and and you know daydreams, night dreams, all that sort of thing. So Jupiter has a connection to the governance of our visioning, of our dreams, of our imagination, and our intuition. So it's our intuition and our imaginative visioning processes when we sit on the couch on a, you know, a nice spring afternoon with a cup of, you know, Earl Grey tea and we're looking out the window dreaming about what we'd like our life to look like, who we want to be, how we'd really like it to work out for us. That begins the process of expansion. Because it's in those processes of trusting our intuition and tapping into our imagination and our visioning you know, processes that we begin an, a shift of energy within us. And that's when the old hermetic principle of as within, so without starts to work for us. When we change our inner being, then we start to see external circumstances change to reflect that shift in energy within us. And Jupiter does his work on that inner level. He is also an externally manifesting planet, but he begins by working on this inner level, creating a higher vibration for us through allowing us to feel more abundance, more joy, more optimism, more joviality. The word jovial comes from the word Jupiter, actually. And it's through this inner change in our levels of optimism and uh, abundance consciousness that then we begin to see the manifestation happen in reality and we start to see our outer circumstances change and Jupiter begins that process by when he transits a house by lifting our vibrational level inner in our inner world to be able to receive on the outer world. Now Jupiter is named after the ancient Roman god, uh, king of the gods actually in mythology and there's an association with Thor in Norse mythology, there's an association with um, Zeus in Greek mythology and there's an association with Marduk in the ancient Babylonian mythology as well. So that he has links to all those energies of being the, the supreme god or governor over all or, um, you know, the, the, the one top authority, top dog, so to speak. And because of that, he actually rules in astrology lawmakers, judges, legal systems, higher levels of knowledge, um, places of, of learning that are of that, that higher level you know um, universities and colleges he also governs things like religion and belief systems long distance travels not just short little trips but the big we're talking Jupiter his big big travels overseas or to other you know countries that are far away he governs other cultural practices and other cultural beliefs he, like Jupiter represents other cultures in general and he also is a representation of higher knowledge from the divine realms. And it's this that makes him the Lord of Intuition, the angel on our shoulder giving us wisdom and guidance in our journey. The Guru, as he's known 
in Vedic astrology. Jupiter is referred to as guru and there's a very good reason for that because he gives this wisdom, he gives this knowledge. He is the the wise, you know, angel on our shoulder. Now this is a spring series uh, that I am preparing. It's spring in Australia when I'm launching this series. If you're watching it at different times of the year, it'll be a different season obviously. But in Australia it is spring at the moment, which I thought was a perfect time to be doing a series on Jupiter and his transits because spring is about growth. Spring is about the expansion, the, the, you know, the blossoming and very much the, the abundant nature of Jupiter represented in spring. But Jupiter actually rules the colors purple and orange. And as you can see, I'm wearing a purple cardigan with my spring attire here. Um, and there's purple flowers all over my dress. Also, if you look behind me, I've decorated part of my house with um, a lot of purple and orange. There's an orange door there and a purple painting and so on and so on, because I really want to channel the energy of Jupiter in my home. I myself am a very highly Jupiterian person. And so I really want to bring that energy in. And Jupiter governs these things. Jupiter rules the crystals lapis lazuli and malachite. According to the, the research that I have done, there's some varying opinions around that. But this is malachite. I don't have any lapis lazuli on me at the moment, but I will be getting more. Lapis lazuli... Um, was often used and possibly malachite as well in ancient Egyptian jewelry and tomb decorations and so it was con it was was attributed to the the pharaohs or not attributed to the pharaohs but it had connections to this leadership element in ancient Egypt that was only the wealthy only the um, prosperous only the pharaohs and their families that were able to enjoy um, the luxuries of uh, lapis lazuli and malachite and of course, Jupiter has these associations with abundance and with wealth and with the lawgivers and leaders. Jupiter's day is Thursday. Now, those of you who are familiar with how the days of the week got their names will know that it's it comes from the Norse Thor's day. And we've already said Jupiter has an affiliation with Thor. Jupiter, um, Jupiter's day that he rules of the week is Thursday, Thor's day. Now, because of all these wonderful things that Jupiter governs, and we're going to talk about a few more of those in just a minute, but because he rules abundance, because he rules wealth, because he rules a certain type of leadership, that inspirational figure, that lawmaker, that religious leader, that spiritual leader, that divinely inspired leader, because Jupiter rules these things, Wherever Jupiter sits in your chart is where you're going to be able to channel and receive more abundance, more wealth, more um, opportunity, more good fortune, more prosperity. All these things that Jupiter rules will come into the house where your Jupiter sits in the natal chart. But that's a series for another day when we look at Jupiter through the houses in the natal chart. We're looking at transiting Jupiter in this series. So a bit more about the things that Jupiter rules. Let me read this list to you. He rules children. He rules wealth. He rules belief systems. He rules the blood. He rules the veins. He also rules the hips and the ability to move forward in life is obviously connected to our ability to utilize our hips. So Jupiter also governs our capacity and our ability to move forward in life as well. Jupiter rules everything from... Uh, of, uh, sort of accommodation of a very high level um, or public buildings of a very high level, universities, but things like castles, cathedrals, casinos are all ruled by Jupiter. Um, and not that casinos are of a high level, but there is the element of luck and wealth and prosperity that's sort of um, associated with casinos that gives Jupiter the rulership of casinos. But the belief systems around cathedrals and ashrams and the buildings that govern um, our belief systems or that connect with our belief systems. Jupiter rules those as well as the high level um, places where we reside, castles and, um, you know, um, estates and things like that of a, a very high nature, high caliber. He rules etiquette. He rules manners. 
In a woman's chart, Jupiter rules husbands and um, generally he rules beautiful things like joy and happiness. If we want to know where we can feel the most joy and happiness in life, look to where your Jupiter sits in your natal chart or where Jupiter's transiting. You know you'll be able to generate more joy in that area, more happiness. Jupiter rules devotion, being devoted to something or someone. At a perhaps not so pleasant level, Jupiter rules obesity. He is, after all, the largest planet in the solar system. He's big. Um, and if you have Jupiter placed in the first house, he can usually, in the natal chart, he can make you taller than average, but you've got to watch your weight in later age <laughs> because you can tend to spread out and become very Jupiter-like in the way you look, very round in the middle. In fact, Jupiter as a planet bulges in the middle due to his rotation speed and gravitational pull and all that sort of thing that affects um, the shape of Jupiter and he bulges out in the middle so when we have Jupiter in the first house we do have to be very careful of bulging out in the middle at some point in life hence I have to watch what I eat. <laughs> So Jupiter rules beautiful things as well, like benevolence, philanthropy, get my words out, and prayer. So these are glorious things that Jupiter rules. And these are only a few of the areas of life that you might notice Jupiter influencing through his transits or through your natal chart placement as well. There's, a, there's just masses of things, as is the, you know, befitting to the nature of a very big planet. There's a very big list of things that Jupiter governs in our lives but there's just a few now jupiter is at his most powerful in fire and water signs so when he's in the earth signs or the air signs it's not that he doesn't bring you know beneficial results he's just a little bit lackluster he doesn't have the oomph he doesn't have the you know ta-da kind of capacity that he would in water or fire signs he's just a little bit ta-da you know the energy is not quite the same not quite as full he is especially strong in Sagittarius which he rules Pisces which is the other sign that he rules in traditional astrology ancient astrology and he is especially strong where he is exalted in the sign of Cancer so if you are experiencing a transit of Jupiter to Pisces Sagittarius or Cancer at some time in life then you're going to experience uh, more more of his benevolence in a very ta-da kind of way um, because of the strength of Jupiter in these signs. Jupiter has a natural affiliation with the ninth house, the most prosper not prosperous, the most lucky house in astrology, the most blessed house in astrology, the ninth house, and Jupiter has a natural affiliation to that house. He also has a natural affiliation to the twelfth house, which is interestingly enough one of the malefic houses in Vedic astrology. But Jupiter has an affiliation to that because of his governance of the sign Pisces, which has all this 12th house energy. Um, so Jupiter is very comfortable when he's in the 12th house or the 9th house. But Jupiter is actually um, has his strongest directional strength and greatest effect in either the first house, particularly the first house. That's where Jupiter has his greatest directional strength or gives the, the strongest influence for good. Um, but it, the, there is also a strong influence of Jupiter when he's in the 10th house. This is where Jupiter does his best work in the first house or the 10th house. So if you're experiencing that by transit as well, you're going to experience a lot more of the blessing, especially if you happen to have Sagittarius, Pisces or Cancer as your first or 10th house and Jupiter's transiting there. Hang on to your hats, it's going to be fun. <laughs> now, wherever Jupiter is transiting is where you can actually contribute most to society. And this is because Jupiter is charitable, Jupiter is generous, Jupiter is a philanthropist, Jupiter is a, a bene benefic, he brings benefits. So you yourself can be these energies or give these energies to the world and, and your role on the planet. So, you know, Jupiter might be transiting, for example, the fifth house so you can give your um, your benefit your charity your philanthropy to children because that is where um, the energy is of benevolence and generosity is being directed by transit also consider that in your natal placement of Jupiter as well where you can be the most generous and give um, you know in a very benevolent philanthropic way wherever Jupiter sits in your natal chart also so without further ado Let's go in now and have a look at where Jupiter is transiting and how it might affect you. 
So how do we find out if Jupiter is transiting through our second house or not? Well, the first thing I'd recommend to do is to pop over to a, a website named planetwatcher.com and it shows exactly where the planets are at the moment you look up that chart. And so therefore you'll be able to see which sign Jupiter falls in, whereabouts in the horoscope he's currently sitting at that moment. Now, as I'm recording this, Jupiter is heading towards the end of the sign of Capricorn. And um, so very soon he's going to be changing into Aquarius. But we're going to use Capricorn as the example in, in this instance. If Jupiter is in Capricorn and we're looking for Jupiter's transit through the second house, then we would need to be Sagittarius rising in order for Jupiter to be falling in the second house in whole sign astrology. As you can see, house one, house two, second house. And that's how easy it is, folks. So if you know your rising sign, then that is going to tell you where Jupiter is by comparison. So for example, if you are Sagittarius rising and you happen to be watching this video in about four years time, Jupiter takes one year to move through each sign. So one year through Capricorn, two years through Aquarius, three years through Pisces, four years he'll be in the sign of Aries. Well, if you're Sagittarius rising, that is going to be the fifth house from your rising sign. One, two, three, four, five. Fifth house. And so you would be looking at the video of Jupiter through the fifth house, and that would be the video you would need to watch for that moment in time. So I hope that helps clear things up. You need to know where Jupiter is right now and where that particular sign happens to fall in your own natal chart. So you need to know your rising sign. We're using whole sign astrology here. But we're going to go with where Jupiter currently is sitting. I don't know why I did that because it's a bit wobbly. What I might do is put Jupiter in Aquarius just to confuse everybody. And that makes Capricorn the rising sign. Jupiter will be in Aquarius. I'm recording this in 2020. Jupiter will be in Aquarius throughout 2021. So uh, we're going to use that as an illustration just because my board likes to wobble a bit at, uh, at the Capricorn rising, sorry, at the uh, Sagittarius rising degree. So we've figured out how to work out if we have Jupiter in our second house. What does it mean for us if this is what we're experiencing? I and mean, it's going to last for a year. So remember, Jupiter takes a year to go through each sign. So we're going to, this is a house of um, self-worth and material abundance. And so we're going to feel a bit more optimistic about our material abundance and our material circumstances in life. And we're also going to experience a lot more self-love and love for self and delight in self and joy that comes from our self um, because of this transit. House of self-worth, the, the idea of self-worth, the feeling of self-worth, the energy of self-worth is going to be increased and expanded in us. So it's again the energy of as within so without. That's an old hermetic principle. The way I feel within me influences what happens externally in my life. So the more positive you can, energy you can generate, the higher vibrational energy you can generate, the more blessing you're going to have in your life. And when Jupiter is in the second house, this can draw in financial gains. So if you can increase your sense of self-worth, increase your inner sense of life is abundant, life is good, there's more than enough for me, there's enough for everyone. If you have this sense of inner abundance, just watch. Your external material circumstances will reflect that through Jupiter's transit through the second house. So it's a time that you can magnetize. Remember, Jupiter is a magnetizer. Draw in material gains. Draw in material blessings in life. More prosperity, more, um, you know, maybe you collect first edition novels and you might get a chance to buy 10 new first edition novels this year that really mean something to you. That you know, Or maybe you might get a chance to, um, I mean, this is the house of acquiring things and keeping things and having collections. Maybe you get the chance to add a, a brand new... 1958 uh, Corvette to your collection of classic cars if you should be so lucky to have one of those um, then you know that that can happen for you this year you know you add something really magical to your collection of whatever it happens to be under this energy and you can draw in these material gains because Jupiter in this in the house of material gains and acquisitions you're going to feel like you're getting somewhere materially in life with this. Jupiter expands the chances for making more material 
prosperity and abundance and he expands the chances for experiencing more material prosperity and abundance as well you're going to feel like oh, I'm really getting ahead finally I, I've paid off that mortgage now or I, um, I can um, pay out that car loan or now I'm really on top of things things are organized things are whew, I can breathe financially at last that kind of energy that comes with Jupiter through the second the second house is the house of our personal values and the things that are dear to us, that mean something to us, that are significant to us, things even aside from material, materiality. Um, so, you know, what do we value? What do we treasure? Maybe we value our family. Maybe we value um, uh, our, our social connections, our, our friendships. Maybe we value doing good in the world and helping the world be a better place because we were here on the planet. Maybe we value beauty in our surroundings. Um, all different things. What are your values? When Jupiter is moving through here it's a really good question to ask what do you value in life and so it's it's the growth of our personal values that happens Jupiter brings growth um, and so growth of your personal values growth of the things that mean something to you so maybe um, it might mean that th your connection with your family becomes stronger this year if that's that's what your value is family is important that you know you, you the the family unit becomes really tight really strong really abundant under this this energy maybe you value your pets so you might get the chance to I don't know, bond more with your pets this year or uh, maybe you value, I don't know, anything at all. Whatever you value, it's going to grow, it's going to multiply, it's going to expand for you this year. Um, you can experience um, not only the blessings in the physical realm but the feeling within of being safe and secure in the world as well. This is the house of feeling safe and secure. Um, it sits opposite the eighth house of feeling like the rug's about to be pulled out from under you any minute. And so the second house in that sense is beautiful. We, we all like to feel like, you know, we're safe. Nothing's going to go wrong. <sighs> Everything's good. That feeling, that energy increases this year. Now, often we feel safe and secure because our material needs are met. And that's why the second house is very important. It sits underneath the first house. It supports the body's journey through life. So when our material needs are met, we tend to sort of, Ah, <sighs> breathe a little bit. Okay, life is safe, life is secure, everything is good. And um, Jupiter can bring about both eventualities. You can either feel more material or, or experience more material abundance, and you will, uh, even if you don't experience material abundance, you can feel more safe and secure. Like, you know what? Everything's going to be okay. It's all just going to work out. Beautiful energy, beautiful transit. If you're the kind of person who has fears about, I'm not good enough, or I don't have enough, uh, fears about poverty, fears about lack, fears about the rug being pulled out from under you in some crisis or some manner, then this transit can decrease those fears. It can wipe them away, you know. Um, it may not alleviate them completely, depends on your chart, your natal chart, whether you have a, a propensity to feel like the rug's going to be pulled out from under you or not. But generally, those those feelings will lessen and you'll be more um, as I said, at peace, feeling safe, feeling secure. Now I began by saying that this is a transit that can increase your sense of self-worth and self-valuing, how you see yourself. And again, as within, so without, what you experience inside you about I am worthy, I am you know, so deserving of all the good things in life. If that's the zone you go into through Jupiter's benevolent energy, then your external circumstances will tend to reflect that as well um, with more um, safety and security in your external environment um, as well as more material solidness too. Any investments that you make, this is a house of investments, business dealings, getting a raise, getting a pension, you know, these sorts of things, where receipt of money to support your journey through life, whatever way that comes to you, can prove to be abundant and lucrative now and expand. So you might get a raise or you might suddenly get approval for a pension of some sort or you might find that some investment goes really, really well for you under this energy. So blessing, hello, thank you, Jupiter. Now, in the Hindu system, when Jupiter is making in the second house, he's making an aspect to all the other um, modalities that are the same as the modality he is in. In this case, we're looking at Aquarius, which is an air sign, but it could be water, could be um, fire, could be earth, depending on what sign it is that Jupiter is currently in. So in that sense, Jupiter 
in the second house will be aspecting the 10th house and he'll be also aspecting the 6th house and Jupiter also aspects every planet in the Vedic system aspects the house opposite it in this case aspecting um, the uh, the 8th house so what have we got going on here well when Jupiter is going through the second house in the Hindu system this is the the area uh, the second house rules domestic life um, and our education so uh, the domestic life that you experience might be more joyful now might be more um, peaceful now might be more expansive in some way now and bring you a lot more happiness your domestic life um, and in fact your educational life what where, where you're going to learn something and the, the teaching that you're receiving it can really flourish you might be really enjoying learning something under this energy in the Hindu system of course you might even go back to study you might go back to you know university to get a degree or something like that uh, or might get a you know certificate in something under this energy Good to study astrology do one of my webinars <laughs> under this energy um, so it's also the aspect to the sixth house means it's really good for your work life because Jupiter is a benevolent energy and in the sixth house although it's a malefic house he's it's going to be expanding your uh, ability to work um, you know ability to put in a, a good day's work and uh, you know, get lots done and be efficient and productive um, to notice the you know uh, any sort of things that need fixing around you and to resolve them those energies of the sixth house can be blessed through Jupiter's um, aspect Jupiter also aspecting the eighth house can mean um, you know you, you might end up managing other people's money in some way under this trend you might uh, find that you you might receive an inheritance or some kind of a legacy that's left to you through um, the eighth house which rules inheritances wills legacies um, it's connected to the stock market as well so there can be some windfalls that come your way with Jupiter's aspect to the eighth house nice um, yeah loans are also seen from the eighth house and loans can be easier to get under this transit so if you've been looking for a new house or a new car or a business loan or something Jupiter in the second house you'll be fine it'll be easier to find um, a loan to support the journey and also the aspect of the 10th house in this case well this means increased worldly success increased visibility out in the public realm um, career enhancement raise it like raises in um, you know profile in in your career environment like um, promotions and and recognition that happened for you um, uh, it, through the aspect of Jupiter positively benefiting the house of worldly achievements in that way so it's all good thank you Jupiter Jupiter moves through every house uh, like once every 12 years so it's actually um, you can plan you know to utilize the Jupiter energy wherever he currently is you know if you if you are seeing just say you know Jupiter's in your 12th house you know in two years time Jupiter is going to be in the second house you know what I'll make some investments now while Jupiter's somewhere else in the horoscope and I know when you by the time Jupiter gets to in a few years time by the time Jupiter gets to my second those investments are going to pay off for me winner winner so you can plan to work with Jupiter energy to your benefit to your advantage knowing where he's going to be in the horoscope and what benefits he brings when he's in a certain house in this case the second house can bring you more abundance and prosperity and money uh, more of the the tangible assets that support our body's journey so great time for planning to increase those things or to do a renovation or to grow your collection of something or, or uh, you know make some new investments you can really work with this energy to your advantage so do so thanks very much and uh, do check out my other videos all about Jupiter through the houses so that you can work with this energy to your best advantage in the future